so true. We need to hear from him. We need a word from him, a sustaining word, a word that just can take you through. You know, our summer months, there's so much travel, so much movement. People are just in and out of the church as they're making their way around, some on vacation, some there are changes happening in their lives. And uh, so when we begin to reconvene in September, it's always such a joy. You, you see where changes have taken place. Uh, new couples, uh, new additions to the family, changes of status and relationship, changes of jobs, just changes. And as I look out and begin to see the faces coming back, uh, Earl Adley, who of course has been on deployment in Inagua, he's back. Earl, just wave. Folks, folks uh, can appreciate him coming back. Um, Sister Carolyn Morrison back from her travels and her sister Evangeline and uh, Good to see Sister Wendy and uh, our former member and soon to be returning member, Marcellus Bassett and his lovely wife. Uh, they're, they're back and um, he thinks he's only visiting today but this is just the start of his return. Great to have the family back, a talented family. And if you think, if you think there's pressure, well fine, pressure's by his pipe. <laughs> Sam Watson is back from her travels all over Russia and Ukraine and whatever, and uh, Kirk Adley, been in the hospital a couple times, but hey, nothing can keep him from grace. Here he is, sitting there, handsome as handsome could be. We even have some frequent visitors with us. Uh, Sister Allison Cook's mom is here, Mrs. Cook. Allison Sands, uh, mom, Mrs. Cook is here, and Ms. Cook, just, just go ahead and wave. And, and many of you uh, I'm, I'm seeing in the congregation, you're back and we're just so grateful to God. Uh, over the weekend, you would have uh, heard and been, been getting bulletins about Carl and his, and his, his health, Carl Nottage. And of course, uh, a little bit of a, a, um, a concern over the weekend, a little bit of uh, reasons to cause us to rush to prayer on his behalf. Um, the surgery was successful, yet there's been some inexplicable bleeding that we don't understand. There's bleeding in his lungs. We want to make sure that that is arrested, and so we want to call out to God on his behalf. So we'll take a moment to pray for Carl and just some general prayers about the congregation. Shall we look to the Lord? Father, what a privilege you've given us. We can approach the throne of grace knowing that we can indeed expect, know, and get answers for the prayer concerns we raise. We lift up our brother Carl, a servant of so many. Uh, Lord, who everything he is, everything he is about is service, service, service. Never sitting down seemingly, but always looking for ways to serve others. His house, his home, his car, his money, his thoughts are always on ministry. Well, Lord, we want to minister to him now in prayer and pray that you would heal our brother. We pray, Lord, that you would give the doctor's wisdom, discernment beyond their ability to know what's happening, that they would arrest this inexplicable bleeding. Where is it coming from? Lord, that they would heal him, that they would, of course, Lord, they can heal him, you must, but uh, they certainly, Lord, can do their part in terms of the human realm. But we're crying out to you that you would deliver your servant, that you would bring him back to us healthy and hale, and that he would be returned to even greater ministry opportunities. Help us to be a support to him. And then, Lord, we want to remember others who have been down with the dengue. We recognize that folks have been dying as a result of this, this, this ailment, this, this, uh, this, this plague on our country, and we're asking that you would restore and heal. We look down, we see Beryl, and recognize she could have been a statistic, but now, Lord, she's a testimony instead. We pray that you would give us many testimonies. See? And we ask, Lord, that there would be no more loss of life by this dreaded disease. We speak to, Lord, against the plague of murder in our country. Oh, God, please, please, please arrest it. Please, God, if it need, means reassigning angels from other places, Lord, protect our country from itself. By your Holy Spirit, quell the spirit of rage and anger and this nonsense that persons believe they have a right to kill somebody else's child. Oh, do, Lord, undertake. Remember those who are afflicted in body, 
bring healing and health to them, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, all of you should have gotten handouts. Who doesn't have a handout? Who doesn't have a handout? Everyone's got a handout. Who doesn't have their Bible handy? Be honest. Who don't have the Bible? Devil is a liar. Who doesn't have their Bible? Folks, you need to change that. I know we put stuff up there and so forth, but we want you to bring your Bibles out. Don't let technology cause you to be biblically illiterate. Don't let technology cause you to be walking around without your sword. All right? So I want to make sure that you always have your, your Bible handy and um, ready to go. We've had quite the weekend. Yes. Quite the weekend. Right. Friday evening, the man had an opportunity to be with Gerard and, and, and hear his heart and help to prepare him for his big day on Saturday. What a privilege we had to see a, a wonderful young man, a servant of this church. He didn't go down like Bahamas like to say. He went up. He, he, he got a wife for himself. And uh, we, we were grinning from ear to ear to ear to ear yesterday as we celebrated with that young man and his beloved wife, Danae. And I want to tell the church again, make her feel welcome. She's coming from another church. And, and, and folks, I know um, uh, when you're a stranger in a place and, and, and the, the church is known to one member but not the, the other, you can feel left out. So please, have them up in your home. Get to know the woman. I, I mean, let her feel welcome. You can do it. We must do it together. But don't let her feel that she doesn't want to come to that church of strangers. Let her come among a church of friends and people who have received her as warmly as you have, Gerard, over the years. And then we had something of a reunion um, at 3 o'clock where we had a funeral for one of our former uh, followers here at the church. And... We saw a lot of those who were with us back then join us, and we're just able to say it's, it's so good to be home. It's, it's good to be home, uh, back with the people of grace. Many who were able to give the testimony that their, their Christian formation took place right here. And um, let's continue to be church. In fact, my series of messages um, and my theme for this year, this church calendar year, is I want to move us beyond platitudinal Christianity, talk Christianity, churchy Christianity to the discipleship that God has called us to be about. Friends, listen to me. Jesus has called us to be disciples. Many of us believe he has called us to just go to church and do our Christian duty by going to church. Friends, if that's what you believe, I have failed you in my preaching thus far. Pastor Rex has failed you in your preaching thus far. If your life is not changing and becoming more Christ-like, if you are not walking with Jesus and the old life fading away in, in the reality of the new life and the new challenges that God is calling us to, friends, you have to question what it is you're doing. You have to question whether, indeed, you are becoming a disciple of Christ. You see, quite often in the ministry of Jesus, you heard this refrain, and this was a hard word for them, and they stopped following him. 